Hi, this is Mike Hoffman. I'm going to take you through uh, today real quickly how to download, install, and operate a very simple screen capture software. What screen capture software does is it allows you to record all the activity on your screen. Um, for purposes of being able to show perhaps students or colleagues how to operate a piece of software or even to do a, a, a presentation. You can also record audio as well as uh, some video and we'll get into that in a second. First let me show you how to get the software and the software that I've used here is called Blueberry Flashback Express Recorder. So if you just go out to Google you can search for Blueberry Express and you'll see Blueberry Flashback Express is one of the first links that comes up. You can click on that. You can read a little bit more about the software here. Down at the bottom, you can go ahead and download it by clicking on the download link. This will actually take you to a, an email field where you put in your email, hit enter, and they, they will email you a link to go ahead and download your software. The install process is very simple. You can go ahead and just accept all the defaults and go ahead and load it on your system. I'm using this with, with Windows 7. Um, my sense is it works with other versions of Windows. I'm not sure the extent to which it works on Macintosh. So once you have it installed and loaded, you'll, um, you'll see that you have uh, an icon here for Blueberry Flashback Express Recorder. That's the uh, program you're going to want to launch to start capturing uh, your screen. Now I can't do that because I'm actually using it right now to record the session. What I have done is created some pictures or some screen images of the various screens that you're going to see as you go through this. So let's go through them quickly. Um, when you start up you'll receive you'll see something like this, the Blueberry Flashback Express start screen. Um, very simple, really what you want to do is just go ahead and hit the red button to record your screen. That will take you to a record option screen that looks like this. Uh, there's several options here. You'll notice that you can record multiple monitors. If you have multiple monitors set up you can choose to record one, the other, or both of them. You can record sound as I'm doing now, so you can certainly talk over your screen capture. And you can also record a webcam. And what that allows you to do is use your computer's webcam, any webcam you have either integrated into the computer or attached to the computer via like a USB cord. It'll record the image on the webcam and we'll put it in a sort of small picture in picture box under or embedded within the screen capture. I'm not doing that right now because I try to avoid I'm watching myself on video whenever possible. When you're ready to go, you're going to go ahead and click the red button down here to get started and start recording, which actually brings you to one more screen before the recording actually starts. This is the screen you'll get if you have multiple monitors. And again, this here is where you can des decide which monitor you want to screen cap. I'm right now just doing it with my primary monitor. You could do it with both monitors or just the secondary monitor. Once that's selected and you're ready, just go ahead and click on record. As you're recording, um, it'll give you a countdown of three seconds. It'll then record everything that happens on your screen. As you can see here, if I go to Microsoft Excel, for example, and this is, this is a good potential use of this, if you want to go over uh, you know, some complex operations in Excel, so say for example, and this will not be a complex operation, but if I wanted to show somebody how to quickly sum numbers, I could come in here and just do the operation in Excel, and they can replay it over and over and over again until they understand exactly how to do it um, by watching the videos. So you, you can, again, do Excel, you can do PowerPoint, basically you can show anything that you have on your computer, and you're, all it's doing is recording what's on your screen. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're doing this. As with any flip classroom video, you want to get yourself ready to do it. So what does that mean? Well, make sure your doors shut. Make sure your phone volume is turned down so you don't have that interrupting you and your phone ringing while you're trying to record the video. This is actually take two of this video because yours truly did not do that in the first video. So try to lower your phone volume, shut your door, make sure that you're in a, a quiet, um, comfortable environment. You may also, because this is your screen, if you have extraneous things on your screen, I usually have many more icons on my screen, um, you're going to want to take those off um, so that it's easier to see. You may also want to either close or minimize your email so that you don't have email popping up on you while you're doing the recording. So just some, some tips. Otherwise it works very simply. You're just, it's basically just going to record everything that's on your screen. 
So what do you do next? So when you stop it, um, the way you stop it, and I'm not going to do that right now, but you'll see that there's an icon down here for the blueberry. It'll tell you how long it's been recording if you hover over it. If you right click, it brings up several options. You can pause the recording and that's really helpful if you're showing some operation that takes a while. So let's say you're showing how to upload a video to YouTube, which we will be doing in a future video. Um, that might take a few minutes and you really want to record uh, the screen capture of the progress bar simply moving over a period of a couple of minutes. Probably not. Your, your students and colleagues probably aren't going to get anything out of that. So what you can do is pause the recording and then resume it once that operation is done. Makes for a much cleaner, smaller recording. You can also stop the recording here and when you stop it, it'll ask you whether or not you want to save the recording or get rid of it. If you get rid of it quickly, it will ask you if you want to just start over so that if you did end up having your first take not going so well, you could stop and simply restart here. So let's pretend we stopped the recording and chose to save it. We're going to see some more screens. The first thing we're going to, we're going to see is that the recording is complete. What we're going to want to do is export that recording. So go ahead and click on export and it, you'll receive some options on how to save that file in a format that can be used on things like YouTube. You have two choices. We can export to Flash or AVI. I recommend AVI. It's a very common video format used on the internet. So go ahead and click on AVI and then click on OK. You'll then be given some options on the codec. Uh, I would recommend just sticking with Microsoft. If you get more advanced and want to play around with different codecs, you're more than welcome to. And then you can just click OK again on that. You really don't need to do anything in that screen. And the same is true with the screen here. There's an AVI exports option uh, that you could, if you get more advanced, uh, play around with some of these options. For our purposes today, you can simply hit on export and it will export your video into an AVI video that you can save anywhere on your computer and then manipulate that in any way you want. You can upload that to YouTube, you could upload it to MySPU, you could simply email it out, although it'll probably be relatively large. So that's a real quick and simple explanation on how to screen cap. I hope it was helpful. It, as always, if you have any questions on this, you can contact me directly or contact Carla Bright or our help desk and somebody can certainly uh, will be willing to assist you. I hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.